My name's Ernie Koboth with USDA Wildlife Services. My main role here uh, in Iowa is at the Des Moines International Airport. I am a wildlife biologist. We conduct uh, wildlife control. We conduct uh, airport wildlife surveys to provide information to the airport folks, uh, provide uh, assistance to the operations folks so that they can uh, uh, handle wildlife control issues whenever I'm not there. So that's a big role uh, at the uh, at USDA Wildlife Services for me in, De in Des Moines, Iowa, but I also cover the state. Uh, we do a lot of work with uh, ethanol facilities. We do a lot of work with power plants when it comes to bird control and uh, human health and safety issues with bird droppings and disease related. I've had issues with bald eagles. So the, between the power plants, windmills, uh, ethanol plants, uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad, uh, beaver control, sometimes beavers damming up creeks can flood, uh, can flood over railroad tracks, so that's a big issue for those folks. We do a lot of disease work related to chronic wasting disease, uh, bird, bird influenza, uh, sometimes we get involved and ask to sample uh, for rabies, tularemia, so we do a lot of disease work. And then uh, we also do wildlife hazard assessments. A lot of the airports that are looking at uh, putting up high fences to be able to control wildlife with a fencing issue, they, uh, they have to go through the FAA and the FAA requires them to do a wildlife assessment. So we do quite a few wildlife hazard assessments for airports. So as a wildlife biologist, you know, the equipment that we use, and, and honestly, it depends on uh, the phone call that we get in the office. It could be someone calling in regards with uh, a woodpecker pecking on their house, to a raccoon living underneath their deck, to a groundhog digging, digging up their shed, to uh, an airport manager that, that has a wildlife related issue. Uh, we can provide the technical assistance. We've got a lot of, uh, a lot of non-lethal equipment like pyrotechnics, propane cannons, um, and then and then we get into mylar tape. And so th there's a variety of wavy men. So there's a lot of non-lethal uh, harassment techniques that individuals can use. And then we also get into the lethal control, whether whether we need to go uh, with with trapping or snaring. Uh, and then whether we need to do uh, lethal control with a firearm, we have that. Some of, the, some of the trapping devices that we use can be lethal, and then we have a lot of non-lethal trapping devices where we do a lot of trapping and, and relocating, or we use the non-lethal traps, the actual trap, and then, and then use either for sampling for some of the disease stuff that I talked about, or we can use some of the, some of the birds in, in our hawk traps. For, uh, for, for trapping hawks and trapping the hawks can be, generally we try to trap and relocate the hawks and band them, but we also, sometimes we have to put them down if they're, if they're injured. We've been working with airports for, for many decades throughout the United States and, and they realize that uh, uh, we're the experts when it comes to being, being uh, able to control wildlife be able to handle the control parts as far as the lethal parts and then all the resources that we have to be able to do the, uh, the non-lethal and be able to provide their assistance. So they contacted uh, USDA Wildlife Services. We've made a site visit to the airport, provided them the information of the things that we can do to be able to support them through permits and then the control activities. And then they decided that, you know, they needed to go above and beyond uh, than what their airport operation folks uh, can do for wildlife and so they ask to enter into an agreement. So a big, a big role uh, is, is, is to be able to address the habitat and that's where they rely on us when it comes to those resources uh, to, to advise them on grass height, uh, trees, you know, how far out and, and tree removal and, and then, you know, repairing roads and repairing the fence and things like that. Uh, how do we address birds that like to loaf on the concrete? You know, there's a lot of bird species that are attracted to the airports for the, for the vast amount of concrete that's out there. Uh, how to address uh, birds that are nesting in their, 
airport uh, terminal and the bridges and be able to provide them with information on netting and things like that. So, so those are the things that they uh, rely on us. You know, we, we recommend grass height, you know, seven to 14 inches. You know, we recommend pushing trees back, you know, outside 2,000 feet. So a lot of the, the lethal control activities that we do, we do quite a bit of trapping. This is an example of a, a beaver trap. And like I said before, with uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad, uh, they get uh, a lot of issues with beavers plugging up creeks and then flooding the, the railroad tracks and kind of undermine the, the, uh, the railroad. So we use uh, beaver traps to be able to uh, trap beavers. We've got other traps that we use for footholds for coyotes. We've got uh, smaller traps that we use for muskrat. So, so this style of trap, actually, the beavers and muskrats that would that are that would go through this here would swim through it, and then these collapse over top of their over top of their head and neck area. A lot of the times, for like the beaver trapping, we'll find where they like to swim through certain areas, and then stick these in the middle of that and just catch them swimming. They can be baited up. Beavers are are susceptible to scents. They they they're. Uh, uh, very territorial, so sometimes we'll put scents on the bank and stick this in front of that in the water and catch them swimming through. And the same thing with muskrats, we do that quite a bit. So after we catch a lot of animals, you know, if, if we're asked to take samples for disease, we'll do that. And then uh, a lot of them are, are discarded, either either buried or, or incinerated. But we try to we try to use them whatever we whenever we can to uh, to either sample them for disease related. And uh, for like the deer and certain species, if we can donate the meat, we will donate the meat if we can to, to be able to, a lot of the food banks are, are interested in that. So the other traps that we use, we use snares. Uh, we have three types of uh, raptor traps that we use. We use a goshawk trap. We use a pole trap, which is designed with a uh, trap on top, like a, like a foothold trap that the hawk can land on and then they fall down on the ground. And then we also have what's called a ball shot tree trap, which has got fishing line around the, around the uh, trap that the bird goes, uh, flies down and tries to uh, get the uh, mouse or bait that we have in the trap, and they get tangled up in the fishing line. Then we've got several sizes of live traps that we use. We've got a tube trap. We get uh, quite a few requests to uh, trap skunks in our tube, tube trap. And, and it's designed that uh, it's a solid tube that once you catch a skunk, that you're able to go up to the trap and pick it up and the skunk can't see you to spray. If he's not feeling any threat or danger, he's probably not gonna spray. And then we've got uh, larger cage style traps for trapping raccoon, foxes, groundhogs, and things like that. So the other non-lethal uh, uh, tools that we use are the pyrotechnics and propane cannons. So, uh, and this is what we call a whistler. And it's kind of like modified fireworks is the best way to describe slides in the pistol. It's got a cap right there, like a starter cap. Put that in and then you can press that and off it goes, shoots it off. Uh, these work excellent for dispersing birds, deer. Uh, we recommend a lot of the uh, airports that are doing wildlife control on a regular basis to carry uh, uh, a handful of these pyrotechnics in their vehicle. And, uh, and to keep them handy just in case they need to harass a hawk or uh, a flock of, of starlings or something like that that's out on the uh, airfield. And then the propane cannon, uh, that's kind of a stationary uh, noise maker that hooks up to like you envision your propane uh, uh, gas grill and it's just a tank and you can set it on a timer and it'll cycle every 30 seconds all the way up to, to several minutes and cycling goes off and generally it's uh, one loud boom and then, and then you can adjust it maybe to go two or three booms in a row to kind of mix it up. Uh, the problem with the propane cannon is it's, it is, can be stationary and birds can get used to that loud noise. If they're living at an airport and they're used to airplane jets coming and going, they can get accustomed to the propane. We talked a lot about the non-lethal and uh, you'd be surprised how many times we get called with a bird uh, in, in a home improvement store or a bird that, that got into a grocery store. And obviously you can see the, uh, you can see the issue with a bird uh, hanging out at the, at the, uh, the, the, meat, meat, uh, the meat counter and, uh, and some issues with, that, with the dropping. So a lot of the times with a, with a simple net, 
we can solve a, a bird issue. And then also we've got what is called a uh, net gun. And a lot of the times we use that for either injured birds or birds that have lost their flight feathers that we need to capture. And uh, it doesn't have a lot of range, but the net can come out and uh, entangle the bird and then we're able to capture it by hand and to be able to move it or whatever we need to do. So, so a lot of the times we, uh, we can solve a lot of bird issues with a couple simple tools like a dip net and a cannon net. When we get a lot of requests to address wildlife related issues, especially when it comes to the private individual, uh, you know, and, and the first thing they want to, you know, is what we're going to do uh, after we capture it, if, 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 that's the, if that's the action that we're going to take. And then, and, you know, and, and, and first thing they, you know, they ask is that, you know, is it going to be relocated? And, and, and a lot of the times we recommend, a lot of the species, we don't recommend relocating because of some of the disease issues that if that animal is diseased, uh, that we've taken that animal to, uh, to another location and if it's got a disease and then we've kind of transported that disease from one location to the other. And then a lot of the times, especially, uh, you know, if they're, if they're newly, newly born animals, that they struggle readapting into a new environment. And a lot of the times they end up being preyed on by, by animals that are in that area because they're taking advantage of them being maybe disoriented and not knowing a safe zone to be able to get away. So, um, so for me, I have a, a degree in agricultural natural resources, a bachelor's degree. Um, a degree is not, uh, uh, it's not a must in this field, but if you want to move up into, into a, from a specialist to a biologist to a supervisory kind of role, uh, a bachelor's degree is, is, is highly recommended to be able to make those moves. But we have a few guys and gals that work for wildlife services that, uh, that just have their high school and have an interest in wildlife. But we do recommend, if they can, to, to get their further education, to be able to uh, get something in wildlife related and get those specific courses into bird identification, uh, mammalogy and identifying mammals, and, uh, and those kind of those kind of classwork that you can get through college. Uh, so this job provides you uh, those great opportunities, uh, not only to, to, to possibly work in the state that you live in, but also opportunities to go to other states and to be able to get more experiences dealing with different wildlife. There's those opportunities in other states. This job is, uh, is, is kind of one of those, is the best way to describe is you never know each day that you come in uh, what's going what's gonna to develop when the phone rings. Uh, you know, someone could be calling related to just a, a, a small issue with a, with a bird in their house. Or it could be like something as, as drastic as uh, an airport calling and saying, hey, we, we had a major bird strike and we have a major issue with with deer or certain bird species or we've got bald eagles can you help us out and be able to address that so so the neat thing about this job is is from every single day you just don't know uh, what you're going to get into i have a little bit of consistency here but uh, tomorrow i could be totally on the opposite side of the state addressing a beaver issue for the railroad i could be uh, on the other side of the state addressing, uh, helping out an ethanol plant. So it's, it's a very diverse job and uh, a lot of hands-on and working with people and working with wildlife.